Hello, welcome to ETG's The State of Play, where we give you the lowdown on travel news to Asia and beyond. The show where we say, what the hell is going on and when can I go on holiday? It's Sam again, and this time I'm coming live from Corfu, um, if only to convince people that travel is not only possible, but it's still bloody great. Um, but we will be sticking to our Asian brief, of course, and I've got Melissa with me once again. Um, coming live from South East London. So, Melissa, how are you? Jealous? Um, yeah, I was going to ask if that's actually a Zoom backdrop, but it's clearly not because I can hear hear the noise in the background. So, um, yeah, bit, bit jealous, bit jealous. Yeah, cicadas in the background and all of that. Yeah, well, listen, what we're going to do is go straight into Melissa talking about uh, um, Asia, the latest travel news. She's got 60 seconds again. Quick brag on her behalf and say that most of her predictions so far are coming uh, coming pretty much bang on. Um, even if they're not exactly what we want to hear. So uh, let's hear from the uh, let's hear from Melissa. Over to you. Um, OK, so um, there's not really an awful lot to update on um, in Asia this time. And I'm going to try my best not to obsessively talk about the uh, traffic light system. So I thought I'd mention that demand for overseas travel has really begun to return in America and Europe. Um, they've got a bit less red tape to get through to travel abroad than we do from the UK. Um, and, and maybe this might prompt the UK government to ease some of our confusing travel rules. Hopefully, they'll see that the UK can't get left behind like this with travel, um, which obviously affects business as, as well as it does holidays. Um, and I know that some people have, um, may have had a stressful time with um, perhaps trips to France or with uh, tents being, being blown away in Cornwall. Um, so hopefully some of these changes will be made soon so people who want to visit Asia for some autumn and winter sun can start planning with a bit more confidence. Um, and if anyone's thinking along those lines, my tip is to start with fairly simple escapes, places that you can fly to directly, um, like Oman, the Maldives and Thailand, um, which we've talked about a lot before. Uh, we've not mentioned Sri Lanka so much in previous weeks, but it's also a great option um, obviously a country we absolutely love at ETG you can get there directly great variety of things to see and do and it's now more or less open um, of course the key to much of this will be um, these destinations going on to the amber or green list soon um, hopefully on Thursday fingers crossed fingers crossed indeed well thank you Melissa now from the check-in um, let's go to the departure lounge where we'll take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of those questions um, so first of all you mentioned Sri Lanka there. So from the from the Sri Lanka perspective, um, what are the rules about travelling there, Melissa? Um, so to get into Sri Lanka, um, you, whether you're double vaccinated or non-vaccinated, you have to spend at least one night in um, a, a designated hotel where you take a test. Um, and once you've taken the test, um, you can then move around the country. Now, if you're double vaccinated you're then completely free to travel wherever you want in the country. Um, if you're not vaccinated, um, then you can explore the country within what they've called the bio bubble, um, which is a set of designated hotels, um, all fantastic hotels, great hotels, um, and they're also designated tourist sites and, and experiences you can do as well. But you have to, if you're not vaccinated, you have to stay um, within that bio bubble. Um, and like I say, if you're um, double vaccinated you don't have to um, you can stay at those bio bubble hotels but once you leave them you're not able to go back into um okay. any of the and, hotels and, on the on the list yeah and, and what about children that there makes if, if they're accompanying parents so children um can as double vaccinated if if their parents are double vaccinated too so it all really depends on their um that's sorry that's under specifically under 18 um is based on their parents vaccination status yeah, so it's it's really quite a it's quite a development, and probably should give people quite a lot of heart if they're looking to get something booked for winter or or even summer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for anyone you know who's had their um, you know had uh, what, terrible weather in the UK this summer when they've been on holiday, Sri Lanka is a great place for summer holiday. So if you want to you know plan something to, uh, to look forward to next year, then um, Sri Lanka is fantastic for um, family holidays in the summer. Yeah. OK, so just to be clear, it is currently on the red list for UK travellers, um, but they are accepting travellers in um, along the lines of the rules that you you just said. And um, I think, you know, different different nationalities have have very different rules on, on what 
where they can go and where they can't yeah, go. Yeah, they, they do. Um, moving on from Sri Lanka, anywhere else, any other suggestions for places to book? I mean, a lot of people are having a staycation this year or some, some people are lucky enough to go out to places like Corfu, like I have. Um, but if you're thinking about getting something booked for winter or for next year, what, what's your top tip at the moment, Melissa? Um, well, I would think um, if you're thinking as far ahead as next summer, um, then Indonesia and um, also Borneo are always fantastic options um, for the summer holidays um, and, and offer quite a lot for families as well. Um, if you're thinking more towards this autumn winter, as I mentioned before, I would probably certainly in the short term be looking at places that are relatively straightforward to get to. Um, like Oman and Maldives and perhaps Thailand. Awesome. Okay, thanks very much, Melissa. Now, let's go to the section of the show where we say, don't quote us, where Melissa will bring us uh, a little snippet of uh, insider information um, from, from the travel industry. So, Melissa, what have you got for us today? Um, well, I'm not sure if it's uh, exactly insider information, but if it's allowed, I'm going to make maybe a prediction that my previous predictions about restrictions being eased on the red list might might come to be this week. Um, I mentioned before the the, the, um, the the hubs like Dubai and Qatar um, and um, and the Maldives, um, and hopefully those destinations might shift away. Um, from the red list this week, which would be fantastic. Um, and I'm not claiming any great insight on this one as it's, it's been in the press, but um, Bhutan, um, it's been talked about that Bhutan could well go on the um, green list, as it, as it should be. Um, they've had um, fairly tight border controls during the pandemic, and they managed to vaccinate pretty much all of the population in the space of about two weeks. Um, they, they, they waited and then they vaccinated, they did the first uh, the first dose has to be given on an auspicious date. Um, and I think specifically um, it was given to a woman, had to be given to a woman born in the year of the monkey. Um, and they always do things differently and calmly in Bhutan, which is why it's such a wonderful place. Um, and the logistics of getting to Bhutan um, is still going to be a bit tricky, um, but I think there's really no more magical place for anyone planning a, a, a once in a lifetime trip after the pandemic, really. Um, yeah, so sorry, I went a bit, bit off piece there, and, and I also ended up talking about traffic lights, which I said I wouldn't, but um, I love Bhutan, and I think it would be, be great to see it on the green list. Yeah, it'd be an amazing thing to, to have to look to, forward to as well. So thank you very much, Melissa. So finally, we're going to go to the weather. Um, now, I'm in a heat wave here, so uh, it's about 38 degrees, but Holly from Holiday's Travel is going to let us know. Um, are, you, are you there, Holly? Hi. Hi, Sam. Yes, haven't quite got the same heat wave over here, unfortunately, but glad someone's getting a bit of the heat. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. Well, I do like to uh, to uh, brag a little bit. I know I know there has been some horrible weather in the UK, but if people are looking to book a Sri Lanka trip for next summer, um, great all round family destination in the summer. Um, what what sort of weather can they expect there, Holly? Yeah, so what a lot of people don't realise is that summer is actually an ideal time to visit Sri Lanka. So July through to September is what is actually known as the inter-monsoon season, as it falls between Sri Lanka's two main rainy seasons. The first being the southwest monsoon that sort of comes in during May and June, and the northeast monsoon, which tends to be around October, November time. So that means that during our summer, other than the odd short sharp shower, the weather at this time of year is pretty much ideal with temperatures averaging around about the high 20s and days being typically very bright and sunny. Um, in particular, the east coast is actually really, really good at this time as well. There's even uh, less chance of rain over this side and the seas are really calm and tranquil, making it perfect for taking a dip. Um, so all in all, really excellent time to travel. And as you've pointed out, Sam, really brilliant option for families looking for a tropical summer holiday. So there you have it. Holly from Holidays Travel. Thanks so much, Holly. So that's all we've got time for today. Um, just like to say that we have an email bulletin here at uh, ETG. Um, you can sign up to and we promise you will be the very first to hear um, any news for Asia travel generally. So sign up. The link should be alongside this recording below, above it, however we've got that. Um, sign up and you will be the first to hear. So uh, thank you very much. Lovely to talk to you all again and speak to you soon. Bye.